Valerie Amos is the United Nations Humanitarian Chief and she joins us now live from the Jordanian capital Amman. Good to have you with us. Of course, it's Thank your you. job to try and get aid into that very messy situation which Rula has been talking to us about. Is the Syrian government still objecting to you bringing aid in, especially when it comes to the border in the north? We've had a number of discussions uh, with the Syrian government about uh, getting uh, aid into that group of people who are stuck uh, on the Syrian side of the border with uh, Turkey. Uh, the government, of course, are very reluctant for any aid to come in through borders that they themselves do not uh, control. Uh, and at this point Why? in time, Could I, if we I do could not jump in here, that. what reason are they giving you when you say they're very reluctant? I take that to mean they, they simply haven't agreed yet to let you bring in aid over the northern border. Why? They have not agreed. They say that uh, they will not agree to it. Uh, this is a border that is not really controlled uh, by the government. Uh, we don't have any such issue with the border, for example, with uh, Lebanon or with Jordan, Jordan where we are able to bring uh, goods and supplies in where there are customs checkpoints uh, and the government is controlling uh, that border crossing. Right. Now, what I understand, though, the aid that you can bring in elsewhere, it's really difficult to get it into the north. And there's, there's a lot of people there who are suffering without aid. Allow me to ask you, since the, the uh, government doesn't control those crossings, and I know that the UN regulations, but why not just coordinate with the opposition who control that part of the border to save lives in the north? Well, of course, it's important that we save lives, but uh, the UN uh, General Assembly, which is made up of the member states of the United Nations, when they agreed the terms on which we could conduct humanitarian operations, they said in that resolution that we needed to do it with the consent of the affected uh, country. We do not have the consent of the affected uh, country, and that is why we have worked so hard to try to get aid to those people through Syria itself. Of course, it's much harder. The security situation in some parts of the country remains extremely volatile. It's more difficult. So it would be easier if we were able to bring the aid in that way. But given that the Syrian authorities have said no, we have to look for alternatives and do it as quickly and as effectively as possible. I guess uh, the only way around that might be a UN Security Council resolution. Would you call for one here in Al Jazeera, a, a UN Security Council resolution to say there's got to be aid taken in from every way uh, necessary? I have briefed the Security Council on a number of occasions about the situation inside of Syria. Uh, every time I speak to the council members, I talk about the importance of us being able to reach uh, everyone who needs help. That's what humanitarian aid is about. We do not differentiate in terms of who people support, uh, what religion they are, what ethnicity uh, they are, where in the country they are located. Uh, given what has happened today, you can see that it is the ordinary women, men and children of Syria who are very much the target of these attacks. So again, given what you said, is, would you call uh, them for the UN attacks? Security Council to make that resolution? Given what you said, you don't I differentiate, have, people need this aid. I have briefed the Security Council on a number of uh, occasions and I have made it clear to them that we need to have access to all of the places where people are in need. Uh, that's why I was so pleased that uh, the Syrian government itself uh, enabled us to do what we call cross-line operations. That's between government and opposition uh, areas inside of Syria itself. So we're talking to the government, we're talking to the opposition, we're in contact with the ACU. Over the last two to three weeks, we've made a lot more progress in terms of uh, getting aid in. But given the scale of what is needed here, what we are able to do is not keeping pace uh, with that need. There's a recent assessment uh, that was done in uh, opposition areas that talks about three million people who need help. Uh, we ourselves have identified four million people needing help, two million of them internally displaced. We think that those estimates are very conservative. They were made towards the end of last year. This is a human tragedy unfolding before our very eyes. Are you frustrated then? You said you've briefed the Security Council. 
Are you frustrated and upset at the fact that the Security Council hasn't been able to impose the sort of aid uh, shipments that perhaps up to three, four million people need? I'm frustrated that uh, as an international community, we have not been able to find a political solution to this crisis. I remain extremely concerned about the impact inside of Syria, on uh, Syrians inside Syria, and also on Syrians fleeing uh, over the borders, uh, over 800,000 now. I'm concerned about the impact on neighboring countries, a huge burden on Jordan, on Lebanon, on Turkey, on Iraq, uh, people now moving into countries in uh, North Africa. Uh, this is not sustainable. We cannot continue like this uh, over the next few weeks and months. Uh, a solution has got to be found that brings stability and security and that enables the people of Syria to be able to say what they would like in terms of uh, their governance going forward. Valerie Amos, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much. Thank you.